Good afternoon and welcome to Omni Bros Live on a Sunday. Coffee with the Omni Bros. News and fun because I'm eating a Hershey bar on air. That's right. Quality entertainment to celebrate my weight loss. Hey. And joining me. Yeah, buddy. Joining me as always on Sundays is Comics Guide 101's own Lou. Lou, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing actually pretty good after having a, holy shit, what a fucking horrible Tuesday I had. The, the only good news is it can't get any worse than that. You can only uh, go up from there, yeah, right? Yeah you're, yeah, 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 you're pretty right. It can only go up from there. Jesus, dude. So you're having a good day already. You're, you're here with Omni Bros on the internet with a chat that loves you. I love you. The world loves you. And you're, you're, it's up upwards from here. We're talking about comics, we're talking about Star Wars, things we love. Um, and ETL says you look good at least, Lou. So that you got that yeah, going for you. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I'm trying to grow the beard out a little bit, whatever I can get. I can never yeah. get a full beard. I hate that about, about myself. Don't hate yourself, Lou. <laughs> love yourself. Thanks, man. Love yourself like we love InStockTrades.com. Hey. Where you can get up to 50% off your collected editions. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. Today's the 14th of April, 2019, if you're not catching this live, where they are having a 3% off sale there at InStockTrades.com. Every quarter, there's an Omnibros Live discount code. We don't know when it's happening, but it's going to happen. Mm. Order $50 or more in an order, and you get free shipping in the United States. What? And I know, right? Fantastic customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Love them. We love in stock trades. They've been nothing but good to us. Even before they were our sponsor, we've used them and we love them. Thank you, guys. We do love them. Jess. Yes? How's your week been? Uh, it's been a pretty good week. I yeah. can't complain. Uh, let me think. Is there anything I can complain about? No. No? Okay. No. I can't complain about it. I mean, at my age, I'm just glad when I wake up. So, um, yeah, I was. it was a good week. I met an Omni bro yesterday. We went and had lunch, Raf, Savayos, and um, then he toured the uh, back cave. We had fun. So that was a good Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so that was uh, <laughs> Joe Chip is uh, commenting on my uh, color choice. This is uh, Mets jersey because I'm a Mets fan. Those of you from New York, I'm sure you have your choices. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> whatever. Um, so yeah, we had fun yesterday. Raf and I did. He's here visiting a ton of friends of his in the DC uh, area. Um, and uh, let's see, the Star Wars trailer dropped, so that was good. We're gonna I talk know, about that. I know we're gonna talk about that. Um, I will say <laughs> this is the best. I will say that my wife doesn't come down to the back cave very often, but I accidentally left some lights on last night and I went to bed. Oh, Mary M, go Mets. Thank you, Mary M. Uh, and I went to bed last night and my wife came up and said, hey, I, I had to turn some lights off downstairs, but I don't know how to turn off uh, your lights in the, um, the glass cases. So she, I, I came downstairs, I turned them off and it's always trouble when she comes down here un unescorted. So sure enough, this morning, she woke up and she was very upset. Oh, that's not good. Can you guess it, in this whole setup, what do you think she was most upset about? Power Girl? <laughs> Are you shot in the dark? The Power Girl? The Power, girl, Power girl, the one up there? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Power Girl up there. No, no, it wasn't Power Girl or Emma Frost or Jane Thor, Jane Foster Thor. No, um, 
Huh. Goon? No. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was all my action figures. <laughs> really? Yeah. They said they creep her out, and there's just so <laughs> many of them. I said, you know, they come to life at night. And she goes, oh, oh God, God, oh, God. That's horrifying. And she said, there's just so many of them. <laughs> I go, well, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm downsizing. I can downsize action figures. There's a few that I don't, you know, that I don't care about that much. I, I'm downsizing and, you know, we have a downsizing plan uh, in place. Um, and so <laughs> we have a downsizing plan in place. And, and um, she was just upset that there were so many action figures. And I, I just got a kick out of that. I'm like, it's not a big deal. Like I can sell some, you know, I can give some away. And it was like, they were Chucky dolls to her. She was just like, yeah. Oh, they just creeped me out. Um, well, you know, eventually you're going to get a tiny house. So, right. A tiny hit. Yeah. At this rate, it's just going to be me in the tiny house. <laughs> she keeps coming down here unescorted. Hey, hold on a second. Let me turn on a light in here. It's a okay. Light Oh, and there's Gio. What's up, Gio, buddy? Hey, Gio. Hey, hey everybody. I'm doing hey. good. Enjoying a fine Sunday afternoon. I thought you were going to be on today. I'm always on. Oh, that, damn. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to help you guys. Hey. Talk some awesome. news. Uh, Nerdine asked, did anyone watch Hellboy? I actually enjoyed it. Uh, I was originally going to review Hellboy, but then I had what I like to call the Tuesday from Hell, which mm, is, right. I, I woke up Tuesday. I said we were going to, I was going to bring it up on Sunday. I woke up Tuesday and I have begun the process of doing the whole bankruptcy thing, which is never fun, you know, for the stupid decisions that I made in my early twenties and mid twenties. Uh, by two o'clock that afternoon, I found out I don't have a job uh, after May and seven o'clock that night, uh, my girlfriend broke up with me. So that was a hell of a day, man. Oof, that's rough, man. Okay. That is way rough. Hey, things happen, but you know, you got to keep going and you know, we, we handled it maturely and I wish her nothing but the best. Things just happen in life, you know? But in other news, let's get right to it. Um, I didn't see Hellboy because I figured if I'd seen that this weekend, that would have just totally broken me. That would have been the last <laughs> try. Like, I am done. I was just been weeping in my popcorn in the movie theater and be like, no, no, not doing that. Uh, so we've got a few things that kicked off this week. I think arguably the biggest thing that a lot of people have been talking about was the Star Wars trailer, which I gave it a resounding meh you did not no you didn't <laughs> liar you know i give it a resounding meh i thought it was yeah i'm not a jj abrams fan i'm i'm not i just don't I'm, i don't care for jj abrams i think he's pretty me mediocre as a director oh come on it's you fine didn't, what you name, didn't give it a meh i thought it was okay name name uh, i was with tyler tyler blount on this because he uh he was in agreement. He just wasn't that crazy about the trailer. I think it's okay. It's an okay trailer. That first part when the when she backflips onto the speeding Death Force mobile that's coming at her, isn't that bitching? Huh? <laughs> You're going to make me say that again? <laughs> no, no, I got it. I got it. <laughs> when Ray is running with lightsaber fully engaged and it's probably Kylo Ren in that speeding Death Force mobile that's coming across the desert, and she backflips onto that thing. Isn't that bitching? Uh, yeah. What? It's, it's like I'm, I'm talking to Gabe. Well, okay, here's the thing. I've never been a, a huge, huge Star Wars guy. I'm just not that type of guy where, you know, I go to the conventions and, you know, I know – all the droid names and stuff like that. I've, I've just, I've watched them and I've enjoyed them. I'm like, yeah, these are pretty good. But I'm never a diehard Star Wars guy. Okay, this is now the Geo and Jess show because I'm turning your, <laughs> yeah. I'm muting you. You guys are Star Wars guys? 
Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. I mean, I knew I knew Jess was because he's, you know, he, he likes space and all that stuff. He was always into that stuff. Um, but I didn't know you were into it, Gio. Of course. It's one of the, it's, it's like the pinnacle of geekness. I don't know. I love it. I, I am really excited for it. Even if it's not as good as people are hyping it up, I'm still going to have a good time because it's Star Wars. It's a franchise. i probably going to like it. So what did you guys think of the trailer? It's a teaser trailer, so yeah, I don't expect teaser. a lot. You can't really get that much out of it except for Palpatine's laugh at the end, which was awesome. Because what yeah. twist is that? How's yeah, he figure into it? Yeah, everybody. I'm pretty sure that everybody that hated the last Jedi will love this because J.J. Abrams is just going to do Return of the Jedi. No. Yeah, <laughs> J.J. St J.J. steals. He just steals from other properties. Oh boy, Let's what are we going to do with you? Lou, Lou, what are we going to do with you? He feels that he's not even that great at it. At least Tarantino is really good at it. Did you know that I was really looking forward to this episode the whole week? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot I cannot express my disappointment uh, in words. I'm, okay. just, I'm getting ready to turn green and large. Well, let's look at his track record. Okay, Mission Impossible 3. No, I don't then, care. I want to talk about Star Trek, not J.J. Abrams. Star Wars. I want to talk about... <laughs> well, he did a great job with Star Trek, too. I think. I will get... Okay, his first Star Trek is the best film he's done. I really like his that first was Star Trek. I loved his first Star mm -hmm. Trek. I, I agree with you. I really loved his first Star Trek. It was, it was a breath of fresh air for the franchise, and it was what it needed after being dormant for so long. I really, really dug his, his uh, first Star Trek. Yeah. His second Star Trek was a poor man's excuse of Wrath of Khan. Yeah, I I liked it a lot. Um, but yeah, it's hard to beat Ricardo Montalban, yeah. even as much as I like Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, yeah. It still had a lot of good twists and turns in it. And um, But yeah, it's hard to beat the original on that. Oh, 100%. It, um, but I, uh, I think this is going to be great. I think the reason I'm into it probably more than you is because my daughter is such a Star Wars nerd. Mm -hmm. She has close friends that actually, this is how deep it goes in her, that actually went to Chicago to be at that event and were on their phones with my daughter, you know, s typing stuff to her immediately. That's how I knew that it was Palpatine's laugh at the end before anybody because Palpatine came on stage and said, roll it again. And so she texted me that and we were watching it together and she is deep. She is way deep into it. And so I think, and so she and I feed off each other and I introduced it to her and it's like a father daughter bonding thing. So I, I think that's probably hyped me up into it to a level that um you that's why i'm so into it because my daughter's into it and she and i pump each other up for it a lot okay that's awesome, that's awesome dude that's that's really cool it's 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 a franchise that i grew up with star wars like most of yeah. us you know um but i just it's never stuck with me so it's never stuck with me that much um like, like for example, RoboCop. Like, I grew up with RoboCop, and I love the RoboCop films. Yes, there's even a soft spot in my heart for the Frank Miller one, and I. It's horrible. It's it's trash. It's horrible. There's nothing redeeming about it. But I really dig the first two RoboCop films. Why are uh, you bringing RoboCop into a Star Wars discussion? RoboCop is better than Star Wars. Motherfucker! Uh, wow! <laughs> wow! That's okay. I'm, I, I will plant my flag in that place right there. Okay, this discussion's over. Let's move on to the girl who went Wolverine on her uh, boyfriend's car. <laughs> Obviously, we we might as well be having this discussion with Gabe. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I thought we were going to have a really positive, exciting, fun discussion and dis dissect the teaser. <laughs> and here I'm finding out... Uh, that um, my mother is really my aunt, and uh, <laughs> I never had a real mom. 
What, okay, <laughs> did, you know, okay, didn't that scene get you in Robocop, the first one where <laughs> one woman performed the shotgun at Morty? And then he's like, it's, ah, ah, that never I, got you? I love the first Robocop a lot, but I don't see how you crowbarred it into this Star Wars discussion. <laughs> that was a weird segment. Yeah, it was. Where did that come from? Evil can evil can not make that leap in logic. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh man. Okay, let's <laughs> anyway, let's, for let's real, I thought the teaser was lots of fun. Um, I it to me it looks like at the very end they're coming up on the Death Star wreckage, yes. um, which uh, the theory is that may be where Palpatine's Force Ghost is hanging out. I don't know. That's just a fan theory. Uh, the other theory is Rise of the Skywalker's is that Ray turns uh, Kylo good. He goes back to his Skywalker roots. Mm -hmm. uh, they marry and or do whatever they do and have lots of little Skywalkers, and that's where the rise of the Skywalkers come from. I, I'm, I the, want the Go ahead. Yeah, I want that to be true. I, I, I'm rooting for that theory. Yeah. I uh, okay. I, I God damn it! I swear to God, I really fucking hope she's not a Skywalker. I really hope Ray is not a Skywalker because if it is, I'm gonna be so pissed. It's I don't think we, she she's something because she because Adam Driver. I mean, Kylo Ren said he is a Skywalker. Kylo Ren is a Skywalker. Though. I know, but he said your parents were nothing, and we know that was a MacGuffin because the way he said it in Last Jedi, we know that was a lie. Her parents are somebody yeah. important. I mean, well, her parents could have been Palpatine for all I know. Well, you you can take that as one of awesome. yeah, and I think that's what JJ is going to do. Where the whole thing was, oh, he's just lying to you. Where I think Ryan Johnson's intention was, let's get away from the Skywalkers being the center of the fucking universe. But this this thing's always been about the Skywalkers, and that's fine. It's a family saga. It's a fa it's a family movie about the Skywalkers. It's yeah. always been. And I kind of think that's that's a bit of a crutch. I, I I think it's a universe. It's bigger than just this small family and these same little characters. Let's go wider than that. We know that there are more people now that are force sensitive. They established that in the last one. Why does she have to be a Skywalker? She doesn't have to be. Other no, than I, don't, I don't think she is. On. Other than J.J. Abrams has a hard on for every single movie that he saw when he was a child and he wants to recreate that. I don't think she is a Skywalker because then she and Kylo Ren can't get together, which is where I think this thing's leading. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think. I think that I don't think she is a Skywalker, but I think she's somebody important. I could see her being a Kenobi. I like that the Clark Nato. I could see her being. A, I would be. You know what? Fine. I. I okay. If she is a Kenobi, ooh, that'd I'll be cool. Be, I, I would actually not mind her being a Kenobi. I would actually now that would be interesting. Um, I, I don't know, man. I mean, it just, I, I actually, I'm one of the, I'm a Last Jedi apologist. I actually liked some of the stuff that Ryan Johnson was doing in there. I didn't like it all. I love it all. I really dug the fact that he had the balls to actually shake things up a little bit. Not all of it worked. A lot of it, you know, a lot of it was, eh. but some of the stuff in there, I really, really liked that he was like, all right, let's, Kind of take these tropes, turn them on their ears. Let's let's explore a different. Okay, so the, the people that are bitching about Luke, you know, people change. We've talked about this on this podcast before, and the time between the last Star Wars film and the time where Luke is when we get to him in the Last Jedi, that was a long time. So people saying, "Oh, Luke wouldn't be like this." Da 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 da. Characters change, yeah. and. Luke has been away from uh, for a long time, and we see what happened in the backstory and everything. I I just think that I know J.J. Abrams. He's just gonna go in, and he's just gonna do Return of the Jedi again. He's gonna no. do all the characters and stuff that people want to see. Because no, and <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that. But he is that kind of a director. He is that director where he is going to give you all the things that you want, and it's gonna make you feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside, and you're gonna walk out of the theater feeling good. And he's going to pander because that's he's a pandering director. 
I think well, her real name is Dan Diego Palpatine. Dan she's a she's a Palpatine. She's a she's I mean, the daughter of Senator Palpatine. It like like the big problem with Star Wars is that Episode Nine not only has to feel like a film, but it also has to conclude the new trilogy. But it also has to conclude all the saga movies. So it's a daunting task. I don't. I, I'm really interested in seeing if Abrams has what it takes to close out a nine-picture story, if you will. Because at the end of the day, unfortunately, it's all about the Skywalker. So I'm really interested to see if it all uh, fits in nicely with each other. Also, I'm going to be nitpicky nerd. How is there a piece of a, the, yeah. the Death Star in uh, on that planet? Didn't it blow up? Like completely obliterated into nothing. No, there was shrapnel. Uh, was there? There was a I piece of Death Star shrapnel. And what was it that the second Death Star blew up over? Was that Endor? Why the At fuck? The moon. moon. Yeah. Was it? It was Endor, right? Or was it Endor's moon? It. Uh, it was over the moon. So, but I. But it's a forest moon, so I don't know. If that yeah. forest has an ocean, I, I don't know how it's yeah. going to work. Yeah, well, I mean, or, we're, we're getting another desert planet. Or if the if the empire... <laughs> <laughs> it's all <laughs> desert in this universe. If apparently, every single planet you go to is either hell, a desert planet, or a forest. Maybe yeah. a little. <laughs> yeah. It's cheaper to shoot in hell planets, forest planets, and desert planets. Exactly. <laughs> What was it, Geo, that you said you're hoping they bring Porgs and Ewoks to fight in this one? Well, then I he changed want, his mind, though. I want to see Porgs. It's just that Omar tricked me and started saying, <laughs> like, I want to see Ewoks. And then I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I want to see them eating the Porgs. I'm like, no, wait, no, no, no. That's not what I want. I just want to see Porgs again. <laughs> All right. What else do we have in the news now that you've ruined my Sunday? I didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Fucker. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Chess. The next big thing that happened this week, uh, Disney Plus was officially announced. We are getting a release date, and I don't have the release date on here, so if anybody could pull that up real quick. Quick, uh, Geo. November. When? November. November. No, no, there was a specific date. Was it November 6th, I think? Um, give me one second. I'm checking okay. it on my phone. Well, while Gio pulls that up, uh, Thursday, Din Disney held a webcast presentation to investors focused on their direct-to-consumer streaming service, including Disney+. Plus. Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige was one of the feature presenters. November 12th. Huh? The 12th of November. There you go, November 12th. Yeah. De detailing Marvel's plans on the service, including the catalog of the full slate of films and original MCU programming, like the live action, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I don't think we knew that was going to happen. Was that was that confirmed? Yeah, it, it was rumored, but we didn't know much about it. Uh, the WandaVision show, and yes, it's just called WandaVision, and Loki, starring the actors who originally uh, who originated the roles on the big screen, and the animated What If. I am the one that I'm actually the most interested in. This is the What If. I really I that sounds check fun. Out. Yeah, mm -hmm. they could do a lot of cool stuff with that. Uh, but yeah, it's going to launch November 12th and the price $6.99 and for $6.99, dude, you're getting ev almost every single Disney film, like from your childhood, you're getting all the Simpsons episodes. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you're getting all these new shows and the Marvel. Sh this is a fucking incredible deal that, that Disney is charging for this. I got a question. Um, Are you getting the Marvel Netflix shows? No. Those okay. stay with Netflix. Those stay with Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that that that's that's I think Netflix is the one that owns that actually. Um he, and Disney even said, I think I've read somewhere that I think Disney even said for the next like 5 6 years they are taking a heavy loss on this. Yeah. This is a Machiavellian straight up playbook. They are taking a loss on this and they are under, undercutting their competition. By a significant amount, and by uh, by undercutting, I mean Netflix, because Netflix just announced we're raising our prices up to the premium tier, which I have to pay for because of the 4K content, is sixteen dollars. This is seven dollars. Yeah, I'm totally doing this. 
Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't what? afford not to. Seven dollars or or a full year is seventy. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And if you bundle it with Hulu, you get an even cheaper discount on it. Fine. I'm paying a dollar a month for Hulu right now. <laughs> yeah. It's I, I gotta hand it to them. They they played this the best way they possibly could. Six ninety nine a month, you get the entire Simpsons catalog. You get all of these That's not necessarily a plus. <laughs> you know, the Se season. Seasons nine through forty suck. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting all these Disney classic movies that you grew up with. Have they have they said if the Pixar stuff is going to be on there? Because that might. Yeah, I, would imagine, I think I would they imagine. did. Didn't they say yeah. Toy Story and stuff would be on there? Pretty sure they did. Mm -hmm. You're getting all the Marvel. Uh -huh. also, so, sorry, go. no. You're getting all the, all the Marvel going. original shows. You're getting all the Marvel film. It's it's a hell of a deal. I, I know I'm, I was saying that, ah, I don't know if I'm going to sign up for this a few months. I'm signing up for this like day one. And you're getting yeah. the Mandalorian show, which launches that day. Is that live That's or animated? Live. live. It's a live show. It's, live. it's the bounty hunters. That's the mm -hmm. bounty hunter stuff, right? With yeah. Boba, Django and mm -hmm. Bogota fat. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. So uh, consider me a day one purchaser. I, I, they 100 percent I, I they played this the best way they possibly could yeah i i'm in I, i'm there i think there's 4k stuff included in the bundle as well that's what that was going to be my next question if, if you had found anything out about that geo if i just read a couple articles but i haven't read anything official but yeah. Yeah, apparently it's going to include 4k content because Netflix, you have to pay to get the 4K content. You have to pay more than, like, say, whom, uh, my stepfather, who I think he pays, like, $12 a month, and he just gets standard HD, where I have to yeah. pay 16 to get the 4K content. And is that what so, – is that Netflix premium? What I have? Yeah, the 4K stuff. Yeah. Okay, because with my Verizon that I just got for uh, – my internet, they offered me Netflix premium for free for a year, which is $16 a month. That's real money. Netflix premium? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to take them up on that. It's, uh, it, it's bravo. Like I, I tip my hat to them. Honestly, bravo. That's, that's really all I can say. I'm, I'm excited for this. I, I think it's going to be great. And it's Netflix who is hemorrhaging. <laughs> A lot of money right now. They are wasting a lot of money. Oh, my dog is going crazy. You need to put that towel on the floor so he has some place to rest. Hmm. Uh, they're doing a, a Monsters at Work series, which I'm really excited. Oh, about. that sounds fun. It's a sequel series to the original Monsters Inc. And John Goodman and Billy Crystal are going to come back. So I'm really excited about that. Monsters yeah. Inc. is one of my favorite picks. Star movies. Yeah, yeah, I love that show. And the thing is, I, I like this because they, it's clear they are not half-assing this. They are bringing back mm -hmm. the original actors from the movies. They are bringing back, uh, for the animated stuff, the original voices. They are, they are putting in a lot of work into this, and they are not doing this lazily. And I'm pretty sure in three or four years, once everybody is bought into it, they are going to jack up the prices like fucking crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Perfect. That's capitalism. That's that's Netflix started that mm -hmm. way. They slowly start jacking up the price. Well, it's two dollars here this year. Oh, you know, it's another two dollars here. Next thing you know, you're paying twenty dollars a month. That's how Sirius XM got me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on well, the does, hook now. That those prices have doubled. Does Are, Sirius still have exclusivity with Howard Stern? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They still have it. Yep. Yeah. That's why I have it for Howard. Damn. And he's only on like three or four days a week now, right? Three days a week, Monday through <laughs> Wednesday. What a sweet kick that guy's got. Yeah, it's a lot of content, though. Yeah. There's a lot of streaming services <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. there's a there's an article in the Post now that I haven't read. I haven't got to it yet today uh, about how many streaming services there are and how cord cutters are kind of now faced with a problem because there are now so many streaming services it's now almost as expensive as cable mm -hmm. right well i mean 
I'll, I'll have what I'm going to call the big four, which is going to be Netflix, I have Hulu, and I have Amazon, and I'm going to have the Disney one. Because HBO, I have it right now, but the only reason I have HBO right now is Game of Thrones, because that starts tonight. Once that's over, I'm just going to cut it. NBC Universal, Warner Media, and Apple are building their own services, and then you also have DC with their DC Universe. Oh, yeah. You got, C- you got CBS All Access. Yeah. Uh, Which you have to have for Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> And if you go into the anime world, there's like four of them as well. Oh yeah, there's Crunchy a lot of competition there's, there. there's Crunchyroll, there's Funimation, HD Dive, something. There's a lot of them. You know what this is leading to is a lot of my friends. They're just torrenting it. Like the, the bottom line is, if you make it to where every single person has a streaming service, most people are not going to one. Most people are not going to afford every single one of them. So yeah, you're yeah. going to end up getting a lot of people that are just going to pirate this shit to watch what mm-hmm. they want. And two, you're over flooding the market with streaming services. Eventually, you're going to have a bunch of streaming services that are just going to collapse because nobody's going to buy them. Yep. Yeah. I mean, look at Netflix. They are in serious amount of debt. Like, they keep just racking up debt creating content. I need to see Requiem still on Netflix. I told you about that, right? Uh, No. Nope. I did, but you forgot. I'll tell you again. It's like, um, it's only six episodes. It's like um, Haunting of Hill House, only it's British. And it's like six or eight episodes. And it's oh, apparently yeah. extremely good. I think ETL's wife watched it and really liked it. It's apparently awesome. ETL, are you still in the chat? Did your wife watch Requiem and like it? Mm. Uh, speaking of really good uh, shows, real quick before we move on, I started watching a zombie show yesterday called uh, Black Summer. I know some people in, in the group weren't crazy about it, but if you really weren't crazy about Walking Dead or the last few seasons of Walking Dead, you should probably check this out. Black Summer is badass. It's really good. Mm. I'm digging it a lot, man. It, it kicks off right when uh, the zombie apocalypse starts. And it starts off in this neighborhood, and you're following a set group of people, and it cuts in between the people as they interact with each other and leave. Like, and it plays with time and stuff like It's kind of like the first episode is basically like a Tarantino zombie thing, where time is all over the place, where you'll see something happen to one person, and then it'll cut back, and you'll see how that person led up to that event. It's really good. I dig it so far. Uh, Mrs. ETL is a connoisseur of horror, um, and she is reporting that she loved Requiem, according to ETL. So she is, uh, uh, reporting positive things about Requiem. Mrs. ETL is a connoisseur of horror, Lou. Cool. Who is that? Mrs. ETL? Mrs. ETL, yeah. She is a connoisseur of horror films. Uh, I still have to watch The Wailing that she recommended. I may get to that this week. Um, But she, yeah, she likes scary movies. And she loved Requiem. I needed to check that out, man. Hey, what the heck? Why'd you unhide her? I didn't mean to unhide her. There we go. (laughs) And she loved Haunting a Hill House. I loved Haunting a Hill House. Yeah. Matt's on top of it. Okay, Matt. Thanks, buddy. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Let's kind of move on. But yeah, I think we're all going to subscribe here for the uh, Disney service, right? Everybody here? Yeah, I am. Probably. Yeah. I really want to see WandaVision, even though I think that name is stupid. That is. It sounds like a streaming service. It's horrible. (laughs) WandaVision! You had ColecoVision, now you have WandaVision. (laughs) Totally. It's it's a horrible name. Like, oh my god. They okay. they really it'd be cool. It'd be cool if they adapted Tom King's uh miniseries onto that show. I think it would be pretty badass. Okay, ET, I'll tell her that I'm gonna try and get to it this week. I promise. Yeah. I don't want her yelling uh at me through you about the whaling. I will watch it. I've seen it repeatedly recommended on the internet too. But uh 
Yeah, we should get her on the show in October to talk about horror flicks. She knows her stuff. And that was pretty much the biggest thing that came out of Star Wars Celebration, the name for that, and the Disney streaming stories. I think, like I said, all of us here are going to are game for it. Let's talk about Hellboy. Oh, <laughs> oh Hellboy. This was the funniest thing. Uh, I feel bad, but this made me laugh out loud, this news oh. that, that Lou has about it. I, I feel bad, but it did make me laugh out loud. Oh, my God. Okay. Um. All right. So, Gio, did you see how much Hellboy made this weekend at the box office? Mm -mm, I did not. Okay. It just knows because I told him. All right, yeah. Gio, take a crack in the dark. What do you think Hellboy made at the box office? Now, granted, Hellboy is was made on a budget of $50 million. 50? Okay. 50, $50 million was its budget. Mm -hmm. So it's really not that big of a, a hurdle to cover. Uh, the uh, original Del Toro Hellboy opened at $23 million. The sequel opened at $34 million. Okay. And uh, this was a troubled production. Yeah. Really bad. Well, don't give him later. too many clues. What do you think this made? Rotten Tomatoes has it at 13%, by the way, last time I checked. Uh, I'm going to say $10 million. You're not far off. Oh, 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 wow. Yeah. <laughs> How much? Uh, this thing took in $12 million in the U.S. Oh, my God. Nobody went to see this shit. $12 million. $12 million. Jess, mm. you could sell your pops in there, and you would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's, that's harsh. It's, it's horrible. Like, the... The, what is that? Is that like one person per theater per showing? It's it's horrible. Like I mean, I was reading online. People were posting photos. Like they're the only ones in the theater watching. This is going to get pulled next week. Oh, this, can they do that? This is gone next week, dude. Next, no. This has got another week, and then it, it, uh, Endgame hits, and they're going to pull this out of theaters. Wow. Yeah. Because they're going to use the available screens that this is on. For <laughs> I want to believe this. Wow, did Jess pay $12 million for his ticket? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I wanted to see it so bad. I just plunked down. <laughs> this this is going to be gone once end, Endgame comes out. The day's the 14th. Endgame is two weeks away. Yeah, once Endgame hits in two weeks, this is going to be completely gone out of theaters. Shazam will be there longer than this will be there. Yeah. Holy no, smoke! Twelve there's gonna, million. There's going to be no reason to have this in theaters after Endgame comes out because they're going to want to fill in as many seats as they can for Endgame, and nobody's going to go see this. Yeah. I mean, they should have just made it a, a TV movie. <laughs> Is this so bad that even though David Harbor has Stranger Things, he won't get another movie? Oh no, dude! David Harbor is set. He's in the Marvel Universe now. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's gonna do Marvel. what is he in the Marvel Universe? I'm blocking, he's in the Black Widow movie that they're making. Oh, he is, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, all right, so we don't have to worry about him. He said, Fuck this, and went to the Marvel Universe. Okay, he, so he's fine, yeah. He's done movies for DC, now he's gonna do movies for Marvel, and you know, he's everywhere. He was in Suicide Squad. Yeah, it was a government uh, I remember that. On, uh, Yeah, I remember yeah. that. Oh, that's right. He was in that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he's 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 gonna be fine. He's a great actor. He's got you know he's on Stranger Things and you know he's David Harbour is gonna get work. Like there's there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, so they're not pinning any of this on him. Yeah. Um, no, I, I mentioned earlier that I did not go see it because I I would have just no, not this week. Maybe I'll go. I'll probably check it out sometime this week when I have time and sit through it and give you a review next week. But I couldn't do it this week, too. I predict you're not going to see it at all. I probably, honest, I, mm, I want to because I just want to review it for the channel. But ah, God, it just came out at the worst time for me. I know, and I have a feeling that you're gonna link the two in your mind and just not be able to see it. <laughs> probably, probably. Yeah. I mean, um, 
out of all of us, like everybody knows how much you love the Hellboy universe, and it would be fitting for you to see it eventually and give us a review on it. That, I know. That's my take on it. I know. I'm going to try this week. I really am going to try and sit down this week. Um, I, have, I actually have a screening for La Llorona on Tuesday, so I might try for to what? Catch... My Sharona? <laughs> <laughs> the Curse of La Llorona. What is that? It's, it's a, a it's a legend. It's a folklore. It's a horror movie that's in the uh, universe. What's the universe of the horror Conjury. movies? Conjury. Yeah. Hey, stop rubbing your face against the squirt bottle. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, this did terrible, man. It it did absolutely terrible. A twelve percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but this was a troubled production all around. Right. Fifteen percent. Right? this than i do uh yeah um like apparently reshoots were not great um the director neil marshall he was involved in that scandal with that uh actress uh with uh, warner brothers and he spent a few months with her instead of filming the movie oh, and yeah. it, had, it had like 16 people involved in the production of it a, a lot of people tossing and turning that script around it screams of having way too many people with their input on it. And that's unfortunate because the main thing that people criticize uh, about this movie is its script and how muddled and just how rushed everything is. And I could see that. It's a bunch of ideas coupled up together. I don't know why would you make a movie of like four storylines into, uh, what is it, a two-hour-long movie? Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, this, Plus, I think, yeah, go ahead. This this totally should have been, if they wanted to do this, it should, it totally should have been three films. Mm -hmm. You do the Wild Hunt first, you do the Storm, and then you do the Fury to end it. That's your three films right there. Instead, they crammed the three biggest arcs of Hellboy into a two-hour movie. Yep. <laughs> to, Man, to, it's too bad. To go back to Star Wars, it'd be like filming the original trilogy into one movie. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah I don't think... That was the best idea. No, no I, I really don't. And it's it's a damn shame because that, that just means that, one, we're not going to get a Hellboy, a proper Hellboy movie for a really long time if we ever mm -hmm. get it again. Yep. And two, I kind of feel bad for Mike, man. Because Mike, did you you read that interview, right? Where Mike was like, I had almost nothing to do in this, pro in this production because I gave mm -hmm. up the rights a long time ago. Yeah, he was just a consultant at the beginning. Everything was... Uh, Second or third party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a shame, and I think I, I read somewhere like where the original film, Mike was involved on it for months on end with Guillermo. Like no, mm -hmm. even years, years on end with Guillermo. He was there with him almost the entire time, and with Neil Marshall, he had like an hour long conversation, and that was it. You can read the uh, library editions where uh, Mike recounts his time spent on the original movies and you know that he had a wonderful time it, it was hectic but he had a great time planning everything out and co-producing with uh Sarah guillermo but here like you said it's just an hour or two that's it and, and he never saw that movie again it's unfortunate no it is it's, uh, yeah because it's such a rich and, and wonderful world and we just got like a grittier messier version of what was already done where the original pitch is was that we were going to get something closer to the comic books that was uh, more noir inspired and R rated for the mystery and horror elements, but this this it's a mess. It doesn't look anything like the Hellboy that I wanted to see uh, from the comic books. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. It's it's a damn shame, man. You know, and I, I called it the minute that Milo Jovovich was attached to the <laughs> <laughs> best for all films. Movie killer. Uh, she hasn't made a good movie since Fifth Element. And, you know, I'll, I'll give Resident Evil pass, because I actually have a soft spot for that first Resident Evil. Um, I, I was not a fan of those movies. First one's okay. Mm, I think they're hokey in a bad way. Oh, no, they're bad. No, they're totally bad. But uh, the first one's all right. I like the first one, anyway. Um, all right, let's kind of just... Mosey on along. Well, we okay. can put a nail in Hellboy. Yeah. 
Like they even had mid credit scenes and post credit scenes too. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't. Think, does anybody care in here? I already looked up what the ending. Does anybody really yeah. care in here? No. Okay. I'm never seeing it. Yeah. All right. So the mid credit scene is that they find. Uh, again, if all three of you in the chat that are spoilers, be helpful. Yeah, spoilers. Um, the mid credit scene is that they find Abe Sapien in a tube. That's pretty much it. And that's my mom. So I got to pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good time for me to eat my candy bar. Mm, yum. What are you eating? Hershey bar with yeah, almonds. Hershey bar? Yum. Yeah. Nice. Hershey's with almonds. Nice. My face. Yes. Anyway. This was the intermission. Welcome back. <laughs> so, yeah, we can never talk about this movie until I review it and then we'll bury it. Yes. We'll just stick it in the warehouse with uh, all the other Ark of the Covenant and all that shit. You know what does look good? Uh, Detective Pikachu. That looks badass. I'm seeing an ad fun. on my phone right now. I really, really, really want to see that. I hope it's great. Uh, I, you know what? <laughs> Detective Pikachu will be a thing that washes away the stink of this for me. It's a palate cleanser. Yes. It totally will be. I hope it is. Um, so we've got Batman has been cast on Titans. I, I like it. It's not a bad casting. It's a Lord Friendzone from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ian Glenn. He's a good actor. He is. No, he's a good actor. Ian Glenn looks set to become the latest actor to play Gotham City's famous crime fighter Batman on television. Okay, Best well known playing Sir Jorah, a.k.a. Lord Friendzone, on the HBO show Game of Thrones, Glenn will play Bruce Wayne on Titans, according to Deadline. What's his uh, name again? I, I have only seen season one of Game of Thrones. Ian Glenn. He's on season one. He is? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's in season one. Wait, Ian Glenn? Mm-hmm. Ian... Uh, the 57-year-old has a long history of television roles, having appeared in Downtown Abbey, Doctor Who, and Miss Wilson. Oh, friend zone guy. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. Well, he's, uh, the, oh, he's Batman. All right. I like that. <laughs> the official description goes, needing to reconcile his relationship with Dick Grayson, the duo hope to forge a new dy dynamic as Bruce tries to help his former sidekick and the Titans achieve success. That season two sounds badass, actually. It does, yeah. but I don't see him as Bruce, man. It has a, I don't know, it has a charm to it. I'm warming up to the idea. I like it. I'm not crazy about it. I mean, I, you know, things can change and everything like that. But, you know, the guy's got like a, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't know if it's necessarily for Game of Thrones that he has, but the dude's got like a bald spot in the middle of his head and everything. And I, I, he's an older, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. But, he you is know. old. Yeah. I thought they were going to go for somebody young. I mean, not well, he's been through a few Robins, so it kind of makes sense that he'd be a bit older, but this dude is pushing close to 60, and I'm like, oof. Hey, so easy. He's 57. <laughs> he's 57. So maybe it'll be a thing where he's more, you'll never really see Batman per se, but he'll be kind of like an older Bruce Wayne where he's just in the cave, or I don't know. Kind of like Batman Beyond. Okay, well, I like him as yeah. an actor, so... That uh, second season will have uh, Deathstroke in it. And, um, uh, oh, Jesus, what's the name of the character? The, the uh, Slade's daughter. I forgot her name. Oh, uh, I forgot. Um, Tara? Uh, no, no, no. The, the other one with the eye patch. Um, uh, does somebody in the chat know? Uh, I forgot her name. Um, Slade Ad? Rose? Search. Yeah, Rose Rose. Thank you. <laughs> Rose, Rose. Yeah, Rose is gonna be in the in the series oh, as well. I'm excited we're getting crypto and superboy. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be in Titans? Yeah. Next oh, season. I'm yeah. watching that. Next season we're getting Connor Kent, uh Slade Wilson, Jericho, Ro uh, Rose Wilson, and Batman. So I mean yeah. when are we getting crypto? Next season. They should oh. have the end of season one, Jess. 
Oh man! Well, okay. as soon as yeah, Swamp was, Thing oh, comes, I'm gonna right. do DC Universe. Yeah, he's in it uh, as a post-credit scene, which uh, I am two episodes in a Doom Patrol, and holy fuck, is Doom Patrol good? I heard that. Yeah, really good. And Swamp Thing is debuting May 31st. I'm okay. This year. I'm really excited about. It. We still haven't gotten a, a look at what he looks like. Yeah, Andy Bean and Derek somebody. <laughs> They're going to play Alec Holland and Swamp Thing. So you got two actors. Uh, uh, let's see. Crystal Reed is going to play Abby. Gerald Prescott is going to play Madame Xanadu. Uh, <laughs> Ian Ziering is playing Blue Devil. Uh, oh, he's got a career again. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long 20 and, years. Uh, there's a bunch of people I don't know. I'm not super knowledgeable on these characters, but uh, yeah, they, they got a solid cast from the looks of it. The only downside right now that I can say for uh, the DC Universe stuff is, and I want to believe called it, is that um, they don't have an app available for like the PS4 and the Xbox and stuff like that. Like you have to get a Roku or an Apple TV or something when, where a lot of people that I know use their PS4s and Xboxes as... Mm -hmm streaming services uh, where they use the apps in there. So kind of sucks for them. They really got to get on that. DC Universe comes with a bunch of comic books too, right? That's yes. going to happen sooner though, right? Mm, so wouldn't I, I want it on my thing, iPad? It's on the iPad. Yeah, wouldn't I want it there so I can watch the TV on that and get my comic books on the iPad? You can get uh, you can get their comics. It's gonna eventually they're gonna release the whole catalog, but it's gonna be a year behind, uh, similar to the Marvel stuff, which is six months uh, behind. That's well, fine with me. I'm five years behind on anything <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> you also get the animated shows, and you get the animated movies. Uh, you get the older live action series. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Jess is just going to come on the show to Monday and go, did you guys hear about this new 52 thing? <laughs> it's all What's this Flashpoint thing? <laughs> They've got, uh, on May 31st is Swamp Thing, early 2020 is Stargirl, and October of this year we get the Harley Quinn animated Woo! series. Yeah. All good stuff, man. Great casting on Stargirl, by the way. She looks fantastic. Oh. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm really glad they didn't do James Robinson Starman because you know, boring. <laughs> Don't tell Omar that. Oh, such a boring they oh also my got, god! You also got Young Justice. See, uh, the second half is going to premiere this summer, so I'm pretty excited about that. What's it like to hate fun, Lou? It's, First Star Wars, now Starman. I'm noticing the it, pattern. It's tiring. It's tiring, Jess. Holy smoke. You're not a fan of stars. I'm not a fan of stars. Just like Jess isn't a fan of dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about that. We're almost done. Shazam 2 was greenlit. Hooray! Can we... Spoil the movie or not yet? Have, oh, we didn't do a spoiler review. That's right. We should probably save that for maybe next week. Okay. Have a spoil filled review. I'm going to take my wife to see it a week from tomorrow. Okay, she so doesn't know it yet. We will definitely do the spoiler review next Sunday and that'll cover most of the show, I guess. Yay. That's fun. I'm good with that. Uh, the, uh, yeah, we were getting a Shazam 2. It was completely greenlit, and apparently everybody's coming back for it. So nice. I can't wait. God, I love uh, that movie. I wanted, so, to, I, I wanted to see Black Adam on that movie. I, I know, wonder I, if we will. We could. What is Shazam? That's a lot to throw in there, though. In Shazam too. Uh, I, I would have. Like, I mean, the Rock was a producer on the first one, and he wants to do it. It, I don't like, see him as Black Adam, man. I want to see somebody evil and badass. I can't take him seriously. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Uh, like, 
I just know like, a lot of people want like, really, you want to do a Black Adam solo movie? I'm like, it has the potential to be yeah. epic, guys, because it's set in ancient Egypt and you've got that whole uh, folklore and magic MacGuffins, and, and I think it'd be pretty cool. Plus, at the end, you can do like a post-credit scene with him in modern times, finding that uh, there's a new uh, protector with Shazam and stuff, which can lead to Shazam 2 being about the two of them fighting. I think it'd be pretty cool. No, if they do the uh, the JSA stuff, the Jeff Johns JSA uh, Black Adam stuff, which was great. Mm -hmm. I love the way that Jeff Johns wrote Black Adam in that role. Yeah. Um, but that's... Oh, one last thing. Mm -hmm. uh, all three of you out there that care, Lewis, uh, Lo Lewis, wow. Lois Lane and J Jimmy Olsen are getting a Superman spinoff series. And the crowd goes wild. Okay. Uh, who's writing it, though? Uh, let me check. There, there are two people writing on this. One is extremely talented and is great. The other one is married to a harpy. <laughs> a harpy. Take it easy. <laughs> okay. A screeching uh, harpy. Oh, man. Uh, so I, uh, I know. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, cool. Boy, you've got it bad for her. Who, thanks to this, will probably never get on the show. Oh, jeez! Fangirls will get her way before we do. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Have you guessed yet, Gio? Yeah, I, I read it. I, I I read the uh, info. I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it was announced that we are having, we are getting a Lois Lane and Jimmy Olsen spinoff series. <clears throat> and they are being, it is being written by Greg Rucka. Yay! Yes, yes, great choice, Greg Rucka. And artist Mike Perkins will create Lois Lane based on the iconic Daily Planet reporter and Superman's wife, who Rucka calls the best investigative reporter in the DC universe. <clears throat> this is our truth, and this is what the book is about, Rucka told the Times. Lois is often described as fearless, but that's a mistake because it implies that nothing frightens her. There's plenty that frightens her. The difference is that it never let, it never stops her. She was like that before Superman entered her life, and so she remains. I, I'm excited for that. Like, I, sign me up. Uh, yep. Greg Rucka's awesome. Greg Rucka writing a Lois Lane story? I'm 100%. I, yeah. At, at, his rename on Toya is fantastic. Yes. And I'm kind of hoping he goes somewhere along that line with this. Yeah, crime investigation. Uh, Lois chooses to believe in her own abilities, her own power, prowess, to solve the, those problems that may seem unsurmountable, added Perkins. Lois is after the truth no matter what side of the political divide her person of interest stands on. That person's pretty potent, powerful attributes for a portrayal of integrity in the days of fake news. Great. And we don't have to talk about the second series. We can just move on. <laughs> You've already tickled their ass with a feather, man. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, writer Matt Fraction and artist Steve Lieber will launch Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, which focuses on Jimmy's work as a Daily Planet vlogger and the trouble he causes. This book will end in five issues because Matt never finishes a book. Um, Jimmy's videos are basically the only thing keeping the lights on the planet anymore. Fraction explains. They have had to let him keep... <laughs> <laughs> they have to let him keep doing his thing because it's the only thing that pays the bills. It's kind of like Fraction trying to write books. However, Fraction added that Jimmy's work is also really expensive. For the newspaper, thanks to the Daily Planet's fiscal... Yeah, okay, he's writing a Jimmy Olsen book. There you go. <laughs> That's all you need to know. That and does it, sound it, pretty boring, actually. <laughs> he's writing a Jimmy Olsen book, and this thing will be... It will either, either be canceled in eight issues, or Fraction will just give up in eight issues. The man doesn't finish a fucking book. We are on, what, like 17 issues of Six Criminals at this point? He didn't finish a book. It took him three years to finish Hawkeye. But he did finish it. He did finish Barely. it, yeah. Barely. 
Now, do we want to try and screen share the girl going Wolverine on her boyfriend's car? Or do we just want to try and post it in the chat? You could try and screen share it if you want. I'll let you do that. Oh, you will? Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Let's see if I can do it. Screen share. Do, 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 your entire screen. Share. Uh-oh. Wait, there it is. If you haven't? Oh, yeah, I can see it. Can somebody play the X-Men uh, the animated series theme song? Because, damn. Can you see that? Yep. Hold on, just talk real quick. Because if not, it's just going to cut in between us. Say something. What? Okay. No, I thought I highlighted myself. I didn't highlight myself? I don't know. Mm, no, it's switching. Oh, shoot. Okay, it's wait a sec. Bad, man. That's real bad. Okay, yeah, it looks like somebody... It says keyed his car, but it looks like she took a samurai sword from the 16th <laughs> century and went at it. Look at that. It's from the... It's from the very front all the way to the back with Wolverine adamantium claws and just whack the heck out of this thing. This is what a girl should do to a cheating boyfriend. I fully believe in this. I, um, I, I, uh, I totally agree with this. So there you go. How do you get, like, what do you use to get something like that? I don't know. I did highlight myself. I wonder why I didn't do it. No, it's doing it. You're good. You're good. Okay. Well, now it should be back to normal. It's back to normal. Yeah, it's back to normal. I'm looking at it now. Okay. Like, yeah. Do I don't know. I mean, that seriously, to that has to be something deep and sharp to just puncture and ram it all the way along the length <laughs> of the car. That that really looks like something that you'd use in medieval times, just to. to uh, Go the length of a car like that. Oh. Yeah, that was serious. I fully support that. I'll help my daughter do that to a car if she gets a boyfriend that cheats on her. As a matter of fact, I want her to get a boyfriend to cheat on her so I can do that to a car. You can set the Omni Doc loose, son. That's right. <laughs> totally. And, uh, yeah, that's that's all for the news, guys. That's all I got. Uh, before we go, I kind of wanted to do, like, the little segment that I talked to you guys about yes. with the Instagram page. I love go. that. I for okay. everybody that doesn't follow us on social media, you can look us up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It's not as active as YouTube, but we do tend to post stuff, mainly Gabe and myself, uh, uh, but you can check our Instagram page. And what we're doing is if a movie comes out, we'll post a picture on it at, uh, looking for uh, reviews from you guys, the followers, our fans and friends. And I wanted to pick the top five comments that I saw on our page. So I posted an image for Hellboy and I pulled up five uh, reviews from people. I'm not. I'm just gonna say their screen names. I don't know who they are, so forgive me. Uh, we love you regardless. But um, uh, Velocirafter says, if someone made a movie about an affliction T-shirt, you'd have Hellboy. <laughs> uh, Comic Thom said, some people just want to see the world burn. That's his review. Uh, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, Brown, Taylor underscore Brown 43 wrote an uneven, choppily edited and overstuffed mess that not only bored me, but caused me to doze off in the theaters. One, two, three. Somebody said son of a and with uh, he didn't finish the caption and another user wrote CGI hell. So there you go. <laughs> I like that one. Those are good. Like uh, for Shazam, one, uh, let me read those real quick. Uh, Taylor wrote, a fun and heartful ride that has a rocky start but a satisfying conclusion. Uh, Parker wrote, a surprisingly great movie that can only be compared to what Sam Raimi did with Spider-Man. Yeah. 
Jess will like this. Uh, the Bad Force Times wrote, Omnidog gave it a 10 out of 10, <laughs> and then proceeded to use three emojis for Shazam. Three, uh, what kind Grandpa of emojis? Grandpa Batman wrote, going to see it again, which I don't often do. <laughs> Clark Nader wrote, better than Spider-Man Homecoming, with a wink emoji. <laughs> and uh, the guys over at Amazing Comic Con wrote, the heart of the classic big with superpowers. So there you go. There you go. So if you see if you see us posting a movie about a movie on Instagram, share your thoughts and we can share them on the new show. And Infinity Wars right around the corner. Mm -hmm. This is a great idea, yours, Joe. I mean, Endgame. Yeah. It's uh, Avengers. Yeah, this is a really good idea of yours to get the viewers involved. It is. It's yeah. a great idea, man. Good job on this one. I liked it. Yeah, way good. Uh, an another good idea, if you want books and you want them securely packaged with great customer service and up to 50% off, you get them at InStockTrades.com, mm. where you can also get them with a 2% extra loyalty discount. Every quarter, there's an Omnibros Live discount. Currently this weekend, there's an extra 3%. Don't think it stacks with your 2%, but you can get an extra 3%. Doesn't stack. Uh, over $50 in an order in the US of A gets you free shipping. Don't know how they do it, but they do it somehow. They get free shipping. And as I said, fabulous service. And I reuse their bomb-proof packaging I just uh, sold some books and I'm reusing their bomb proof packaging to ship them books out to the buyer tomorrow because it's Sunday. Nice. And there's no mail service today. That's my reasoning. So nice. there we go. Any last thoughts, you guys? Uh, uh, really? I mean, no, no I, last thoughts. I don't know. Oh. Um, guys, give us a review on iTunes, please. Oh, yeah. Or, um, or the Android app, which I can never think of. Because <laughs> I don't have an Android. Addict. What is a podcast addict? Good job, yeah. Geo. Man, you're the man. <laughs> Clutch. Uh, if you get a chance, please give us a review on iTunes. Uh, it helps us get, I'm not exactly sure how their algorithm works, but it helps people discover us. And, you know, it just helps us out in general. You know, we don't ask any money from you cheap bastards. So <laughs> <laughs> the reviews from iTunes, it's uh, really appreciated. Uh, and check out the other shows that we have. We have the Fangirls Tonight, right, That's Jess? right. Fangirls mm -hmm. Tonight at 8 p.m. Check out their show. Support them. They're doing great work over there. They've had some great interviews lately. Uh, they had the CEO of TKO a few days ago, right? A few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Terry Moore before that. They've got a lot of good stuff, guys. Support them a lot. Uh, tomorrow, what do we have, Jess? Halls, previews, and reads at 8 p.m. on Monday. And then on Near Mint Condition Tuesday, I'm going to be a guest reviewing with some trepidation, but I've been promised it's a good book, Green Arrow by the infamous Kevin Smith. <laughs> oh, but God. I've been promised it's a good read, and i got to read that after I read Hunt for Wolverine today. Oh, are we reviewing Hunt for Wolverine? Uh -huh. Tomorrow we're reviewing yeah, we're Hunt for Wolverine Monday. tomorrow. Okay. On Hall's previews and reads at 8 p.m. And Mr. Miracle. Okay, dokes. So, Gio, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me at a Weekend Geek to them here on YouTube for reviews and yeah. talks about nerdy stuff. That oh. sounds good. Comics Guide 101, where can they find you knowing nothing about Star Wars on the internet? <laughs> You can find me at Comic Scott 101 on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, Thursday, we usually just find out 10 minutes before the show starts. <laughs> the topic is, uh, yeah, usually figured out at uh, quarter to eight. <laughs> Mr. Awesome, underrated reads part seven. No, <laughs> we're going to do that once a month from now on. We'll do that once a month. We should do a Hellboy episode, man. Does it have to involve the movie? No, hell no. No, no, no. Yeah, just the books. That'd be fun. We should look into doing one one of these days. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm I'm due to gear up on my read through again. I uh, 
Let's see. I think I dropped out after Plague of Frogs 3. So wherever that runs on the um, the guideline, I need to uh, start up again. But I read it. I a need ton. to start. Yeah, I need to start Hell on Earth. I haven't read that. Yeah. Jess, where can they find you? Um, thank you. Oh, Kristen says she's looking forward personally to part seven. <laughs> Kristen is the new part of Omni Bros. She's an honorary Omni Sis Bro. Omni Sibling. Omni Sibling. Uh, <laughs> Kristen jumps in for the mic drop. You can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and Omnidog underscore Vault on Instagram. And with that, we say, whoops, oh, went for the computer drop. Peace and love, peace and love, everybody. Thank you to the chat. Marvelous group today. We had fun as usual on the Sunday show. And I enjoyed my Hershey's chocolate bar. Back to the grind of the diet. So peace and love, peace and love. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gabriel Day Dady, for the